Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, Pat. Hello, Terry. Hello, Jackie. Welcome, everyone, to Homemade Cooking. So, hello, Debbie. It's wonderful to see you, all your familiar faces, and some new faces, too. It's great. Welcome. Hello, hello, everyone getting in. I'm Chef Jenny. I'm going to be your chef today for our class of shrimp creole with cauliflower grits. Try to say that five times fast. That's a little, that's a little bit of a jumble. Um, wonderful to see you all. Hello, Lena. Hello, Kayla. Looks like, Lena, are you cooking along with us today? Looks like, yeah, all right. That, uh, love to see it. Anyone else, if you're willing to share your camera, and we love seeing you all. So many new faces today. Welcome, welcome. Hello, Michael. Great to see you. All right. Hello, Deb. So many wonderful people. Guys, we're fully into November now. It's, it's the October is, is a foregone thought. It's, it's way in the past. Are we thinking about Thanksgiving yet? Is it too early to say that word? Just throw it in the chat if we're thinking about Thanksgiving. Hello from Dallas. Hello, Dallas. Um, I'm, I'm starting to think. I'm thinking about making pie crust this weekend. I don't know. Maybe throw it in the freezer. I don't know about you guys. As some of you are like, it's way too early. Don't bring that energy in here. I understand. I'm sorry. And then after that, I, w I won't even say. You know what's after that. Hello, Viola. So many wonderful people. Guys, welcome. This is Shrimp Creole with Cauliflower Grits class. If you're just joining us, I am Chef Jenny. We've got George in the chat. Chef George, tell him hello. He's wonderful and he keeps this class running. We are lucky enough today to pair with our really good friends over at the American Diabetic Association. And we um, teamed up with them to create a delicious, intensely flavorful dish that also is a little healthier and um, lower and mindful of sugars and carbs. So hopefully you guys are um, going to be wowed by this and wowed how much flavor we're packing into this dish. Um, I'm really excited about this class. I have a lot of family members who are diabetic. I know a lot of you yourselves might be or have friends too. It's always good to have recipes that are just mindful about health. So um, this is good for anyone at any walk of life, especially now around the holidays because it feeds a crowd. So um, we're going to get going there. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and throw it in the chat. Chef George will answer them or he'll shout it out to me and I can answer it as we're cooking along. I hope you guys are cooking along with us. You should all have the recipes. So if you feel inspired after this, um, you can get cooking as well. So we're going to start and um, get going here pretty soon and get a lot, few more people going. Um, again, once again, this is shrimp creole with cauliflower grits. So... Hopefully your mouths are watering. Mine is. All of the stuff out here, the spices, it's smelling. I wish you had smell of vision It's just smelling so flavorful right now. Um, so we're going to get into it. Again, shout out your questions. Um, say hello. Tell us what Halloween candy you still have left over that you're eating. We want to hear all of it, guys. So um, I'm going to get going here. First off, we're talking cauliflower grits. Now, those two things might seem opposite, and I totally understand that. Grits, I love grits. Grits are an amazing American heritage food, but they are a little higher in carbs and sugar. So when we were developing this recipe, we were trying to think of something that would be our hearty base for our really flavorful shrimp tomato stew that we're making, our shrimp creole that could really um, balance out with that all of that um, savoriness. And we thought cauliflower is white. Cauliflower kind of has some texture to it. Kind of can be a really smooth, creamy base that mimics grits. If you are team grits, I totally understand. I get it for sure. This is just, if anyone really has to be mindful about their health, this is a great flavorful option. So we're going to get started here. I've got my pan. I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys. I've got my little um, pan here ready to go. I'm going to turn it on. I got a little bit of vegetable oil here. I'm just going to add that in. And then I've got a head of cauliflower, as you guys can see. I just trimmed it and broke it up. Um, if you guys are intimidated by that, don't be. It's a very primal experience tearing apart a cauliflower. You can get your hands in there and just start tearing apart. It can go really quick, as you can see. 
The most important thing about these sizes of cauliflower, I'm just going to add them into my pot here about medium heat, is that you want them to the same size cut. Does anyone know, throw it in the chat, do you know why it's important to have the same size cut as we're cooking this? Florets could be this big, they can be this big. There's a big range of sizes there. Let's see. Yes, wonderful cooking stuff. Yes, well done, guys. You guys make me so proud. Cooking evenly, that's what we're looking for. Anytime you're roasting veggies, you're cooking pieces of meat on a skewer maybe, you're chopping things up, you want them to all be the same size if you're cooking them at the same time so they cook evenly. If you have big pieces and small pieces, one guy is going to be completely burnt and crispy, and the other guy is going to be half raw. So that's day one of culinary school. That's what they're reinforcing. For weeks, all you're doing in culinary school is chopping. You think you're going to chopping school. Eventually, they let you cook more. But you get reinforced, you realize. The reason is, is because it's so important to cut pieces evenly. So it takes a little practice. I just got my cuff, someone trying to escape the pot. I just got my cauliflower here. I use vegetable oil. And these guys are going and just gonna start breaking down. We're just getting a little color in them. The cauliflower has a ton of water in it. So as I'm cooking, some of that water is gonna be evaporating off and then they're gonna start getting tender. Got going here. Some other ingredients, show you guys top down. Got these guys. Also have some minced garlic. So I have a garlic clove here chopped up. Again, we're adding a ton of flavor, but we're not adding fat. Garlic is so flavorful. I have some white beans here. Canned white beans, low sodium. So I did low sodium to watch my salt, because I'm trying to be more mindful here. I like control, controlling my sodium. So I always like buying low sodium products. I like buying unsalted butter. You never know, it always can kind of be a little bit of range, a mixed bag of really how salty things are. So these are unsalted, low sodium beans, or low sodium beans, canned. So you don't, if you want to get dried beans and soak them overnight, I mean, hats off to you. I'm super impressed. It's short on time, especially during the holidays now, it's gonna get a little harder with time. So, Buying canned beans is just fine. I use canned beans all the time. I do not think it means you are less of a chef at all, but there is a lot of liquid inside canned beans. So I rinsed these off and measured out my beans here. We're not using a full can, we're only using half a cup. So um, I, it's important to rinse it off because it has a really starchy liquid over it. And then I also just have some low sodium chicken broth here. So all these good guys, delicious, Packed with flavor, low on fat. That's kind of what we're trying to do. Packed on flavor, low on sodium, being really mindful. I got my cauliflower going here. I don't know if you guys are picking up, but a lot of steam, so really, really beautiful. It smells wonderful. You could also roast this before the mash and then add it in if you wanted a more caramelized color on the outside. You're still using oil, you can just toss it with the oil put it in the oven, you can kind of get a more of a flavor development. I like one pot cooking, so all these guys are in here going for it. George, how are we doing? Do we have any questions out there? I just saw someone uh, message about cannonelli beans, and I love cannonelli beans. Those are great too, another type of white bean that you could use. Um, just try to get them low sodium if you can. Any questions, George? How are we doing out there? Yeah, uh, um, I, re I mean, cannonelli beans are another type of white bean. These are navy beans. Um, I, I really would want to try to stay with white just because I'm want, not wanting to compete with the beautiful flavor of my stew. I'm just kind of wanting to enhance it and give that good um, starch base on the bottom. But if you were in a pinch, you could um, do pinto if you wanted, potentially. That might be good, but it might be add a, a different flavor to it. I'm trying to think. I mean, I really, I really like the white beans. Does anyone have a bean they're really, they're really devoted to that they want to try? I'm trying to see in there. No? Not to see. Okay, yeah. I mean, go for it. Like, can you guys kind of see? Let me see this little color that we're getting here. I love this. This this right here, do you know what that is? 
Let me get this guy here. See that? That's flavor. That's what that is. That is what we're looking for. We're trying to get flavor in here. That's what I want. So we're cooking it and it's getting tender and you can see this moisture is evaporating off. I'm also trying to develop a lot of flavor here. Cauliflower is in such abundance right now. I feel like it's everywhere. It is something to keep mindful of that there are different sizes of heads of cauliflower. Most cauliflower, I find the normal size, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, raise your hands if you had, about the huge variation heads of cauliflower. Sometimes you can get them really small, sometimes you can get really big. I find one, usually a normal head is close to around um, 24 ounces, about two pounds. So get these guys a little under, a pound and a half, I mean. Fast math, guys, fast math. Here we go. Mm. So we're smelling, it's smelling really good. Got a couple minutes here. I think now I'm gonna start adding my garlic in. So I, they're starting to get soft. You can see they're kind of getting reduced. My garlic's gonna go in just for about a minute. I'm trying to get it really aromatic and kind of waking it up in the oil here. I'm not trying to burn it. Yes, the color on the cauliflower is a lot of flavor, Burned garlic is not a flavor. You're not adding savoriness. You're adding a ton of bitterness. And unfortunately, if you burn garlic, it's really hard to get that flavor. There's not a lot you can do. It kind of permeates everything. You could add all the stuff to the dish. You could add a pound of butter. It wouldn't take it away. So try, go slow. It's only you need about a minute to really activate and get garlic really aromatic. You can see that's in there. You see I have a little bit of color on the cauliflower. Beautiful. It smells really nice. I think cauliflower got a bad rap because maybe people just didn't know how to cook it. So they would steam it for half an hour or an hour and it would just get way overcooked. And you're not, you're not left with a lot of flavor there when that happens. But kind of toasting it like this and pureeing it, Cauliflower, cauliflower has a lot of complex flavor to it. It's good stuff. So now I'm going to go ahead. I've got my broth here. And I've got my beans. And I'm just going to get these guys going. I'm going to reduce it down and give it a little simmer. Simmer about... 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes until the cauliflower is fork tender. I'm gonna add a little fresh ground pepper in here. We always try to reiterate with you all, fresh ground pepper has such a complex flavor to it. I love fresh ground pepper. I really think it can elevate cooking, especially when you're trying to do healthier cooking. That fresh, freshly ground pepper is a really easy, quick way to up your flavor and then save on fat, save on fat and salt. So I got this guy going. I'm just gonna go ahead. He's gonna go on a field trip. He's gonna go behind me and simmer out while we move on to our shrimp. How we doing out there, Chef George? Absolutely, 100%. That is something you for sure can do. Um, it would just be get even a little more caramelized. It would be fantastic. So I'm just going to let this guy simmer behind us. Cauliflower done. That was pretty easy, right? Pretty quick. Does anyone have any questions about that cauliflower? I like the idea of roasting. You guys, that's a great idea. Again, we just did this because this is in one pot this way, but if you want to roast it, go for it. You'll really get some nice caramelization on that. So I'm just gonna bring over here now. I love my Dutch oven, so much so we're doing another one. I have a little, again, vegetable oil here. So shrimp creole, what is creole? Do we know what creole is, everyone? Hey, flavor profile hailing from the great state of Louisiana. Creole and Cajun kind of go like this. They have a lot of similarities to them. Creole specifically, and I'm just gonna start adding some shrimp here. Creole specifically can incorporate all of the people who settled in Louisiana 
in our country for the past couple hundred years. So we're talking French, African, indigenous American, and Spanish. And that brings with all those flavors with it. It's why Creole and Cajun food is so delicious because you're getting all of those flavor profiles. So I've just got here a little oil and we're starting with shrimp. It makes sense because we're on the Gulf. So there's a ton of shrimp there in Louisiana. These guys are shelled and deveined and I'm gonna start adding them in just in my little heat here. I'm not looking to cook them fully because we're gonna add them back in the pot later, but I'm adding them in here to just get a little sear on them to kind of create a flavor base. So when we're doing healthier cooking, we're trying to layer flavor. So by searing the shrimp a little bit in this fat, and this is gonna take a couple batches, I'm just layering flavor, layering flavor. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take all my chopped veg and add it in here, and it's gonna absorb and pick up that flavor. My, my recommendation to you guys is buy always shell on. I know it's easier to get shelled shrimp, but shell on is cheaper, and you can always take the shrimp shells and make stock out of it. We don't waste anything here in this kitchen. We love making stock here. Shrimp stock is as simple as shrimp shells, water, pot, heat it up 10 minutes. That's it. You have such a richly flavorful broth that is more flavorful than water. So if you're cooking with seafood, you instantly have this really, really intensely seafood flavored um, broth quick and it's fun i like i like taking the shells off i understand it's not everyone's thing but a little try it next time it's a fun thing to do um we are also wanting devein devein means we are taking here if you guys can see this little vein that runs behind here we take it out you can take it out with a paring knife or you can buy it pre-veined pre-deveined you might also notice here, I have, and we're just getting a little color on these, that's what I want. I'm just creating a flavor base. I'm gonna take them out. I'm only doing one side because I don't wanna overcook these. Shrimp go really, really fast. I'm just trying to get a little bit of flavor in here. I'm gonna do my next batch. You guys might notice here that I have my shrimp on a paper towel. There is an absolute reason for that. It is because that wet shrimp and shrimp are pretty wet when you buy them, they are gonna steam. I don't wanna steam them. So I'm blotting off the moisture. I do this anytime I cook with any protein and I wanna get a good sear on it. I pat it down with paper towels and the paper towels absorb the moisture. And that way these guys are a little dried out and then they're gonna get a really good sear over here in my oil. And that's what we're looking for because when we get a caramelization, then we're layering our base of flavor, layering our flavor. Um, George, how's it going out there? Yeah, any questions? 10 minutes, that's it. It's water and shrimp shells, 10 minutes. You have some peppercorns, add them in. Listen, the rule with stock is it's very freeing, everyone. I'm gonna free you from the burden of, of the kitchen, please. Whatever you got in the fridge, you're allowed to take out and help and throw in the broth, okay, and stock cooking. So herbs, parsley stocks would go really well in there. Fennel, you trim fennel a lot when you cook it. Fennel would go well in there. Um, peppercorns, a bay leaf, you got a garlic clove lying around, throw that in there. But honestly, just the shrimp and the water, you're gonna get a ton of flavor in there. But imagine if you added smashed garlic clove. Imagine if you added a bay leaf. Ton of flavor. You don't need to do it for several hours like you do with poultry stock. It goes really, really quick. 20 minutes max. Again, I'm just layering my shrimp in here, guys. I'm getting flavor in my pot. If you can see here, you see this? This is flavor, this is what we want. It's not covered in fat, but it's just leaving little shrimp bits behind. Delicious shrimp bits, delicious. If I saw shrimp bits on a menu, I would buy that, guys. All right, look at that. That's going quick. We've just got these guys in here. Searing up, 
goes really quick. We only need to do about a minute or so. We're not cooking these for 10 minutes, okay? Don't walk away. This isn't the time to go start unloading the dishwasher and get distracted. You want to stay here and make sure these guys don't overcook. Overcooked shrimp will be really rubbery, really tough. Not a great descriptor for seafood, rubbery and tough. We got these here. Something to keep in mind when you're buying seafood. We're in Seattle here. We're like in seafood headquarters over here. Chef Joel, you guys know Chef Joel. If you're new here, he is our head chef and also a seafood wizard. We were talking about what do you look for? What do you look for when you're buying shrimp? And these guys are good. I'm just going to set these aside. First and foremost, you always want to make sure anytime you're buying your seafood that it smells fresh. If it smells overly fishy, it's time to pass it by. You also want to make sure to buy shrimp frozen because when it is frozen, it's frozen at its peak flavor. You know that it's really good quality. If you're buying fresh and you're not sure about it, then you have no idea how long it's been sitting there. So it's always an easy way to guarantee quality is buying frozen. And we already talked about doing shell on. So shoot free. all seafood should always smell fresh, guys. If you're like, woof, that's really fishy, don't do it. It's, ti it's time to go maybe vegetarian that night, all right? Okay, veg. We got our beautiful veg here. This is what I love about this dish. It has so much spicy, really good, pungent flavor, but it's also stock full of veggies. So we've got here, I'm going to do top down. We've got some tomatoes and bay leaf. We got garlic, we got celery, we got onions, we got bell pepper. These three we're gonna start here with. All right, you guys, really smart. You made me really proud with your answers about dice. Time for round two for questions. I'm just gonna add these onions, bell pepper, and celery in here. Do we know what is the French word for onions, carrots, and celery? What is that called? Steph, right away, my A-plus student, look at that. Yes, mirepoix. In case you saw that in the chat and were like, how do you pronounce that? Mirepoix. Again, that's about the second week of culinary school. After all the chopping, you learn about mirepoix. It's the French perfect combination of carrots, celery, and onions, and is the belief that it's the base of most dishes and stews because it gives you the perfect combination of flavors. But in Louisiana cooking, in New Orleans cooking, there's something called the Holy Trinity. So we take out the carrots and we replace it in with bell peppers, green bell peppers. This is a huge influence, I think, from Spanish and Caribbean cooking because you have bell pepper in a lot of sofritos, you have bell pepper present in a lot of dishes there. Just these three veggies, they're picking up the moisture in the veggies, are kind of br bringing up all of the shrimp flavor on the bottom and kind of almost deglazing it a little bit. So I'm using the back of my spoon here and I'm just, I'm scraping it down. So the Holy Trinity, guys, remember that the next time maybe you're at pub trivia, you meet someone from New Orleans, you'll impress them, okay? You see that? We're just going to cook this down for a minute. I'm scraping the bottom. There's some delicious brown flavor bits down here. This, this combination, what's happening right here, you're also going to see this in gumbos. You're going to see this in all sorts of New Orleans cooking. It usually is going to start out with these guys right here, everyone who's in the pool right now. Onions, bell pepper, celery. Good stuff. Thankfully right now, because I think Thanksgiving's around the corner, you're going to get celery and onions all over the place. Hopefully you guys can find good bell peppers. Everyone got good bell peppers in their stores? Let us know if you do. I know it's sometimes harder as it gets colder to find all the really good produce. I won't brag about the West Coast produce, but it's pretty awesome. So just letting for a couple minutes here. I added a little oil in. I'm not using, I'm being mindful about how much oil I'm using. So 
there's a ton of moisture in this veg. I don't know if you guys can see this cloud coming off. That's helping keep my pan from burning too much. I'm not looking to get a dark brown on here, kind of lightly browned, and I'm trying to soften the vegetables. If you find that your pan is starting to burn a little bit, and you're like, I need to get these veggies, but I just don't have enough, to resist the instinct to add more fat, you can always come back here, grab a little water, and if your pan's starting to get browned, just add a little water. We're not taking flavor away by adding a little water in. Not at all. We're just helping it keep from burning, but it's still cooking, still, still breaking down, still getting tender. George, how's the chat doing? Uh, could you use a red pepper? You absolutely could use the red pepper. Maybe don't advertise that to people from New Orleans. Like, keep it, keep it on the DL. But yes, you could absolutely use a, a red pepper. I understand. The green pepper is polarizing. Who, I mean, are we, is anyone, if you see green pepper on a pizza, is it done for you? Or is there anyone like that? It's kind of, it's not my favorite on a pizza. But some, Somehow on this, oh, we're, he we're hearing from the peanut gallery over here. No, it got, it got really heated back here, guys. No, let's see. Yeah, I know. It's not everyone's favorite. It's a specific flavor. Totally understand that. Um, orange bell pepper, I actually think. I like the flavor of orange bell pepper a little more. I think that would be beautiful in here. Really, really nice. And honestly, you could do the carrot. It's all about we're making a flavorful vegetable base, making a sauce with a lot of spices, and going to simmer it and then add our shrimp. So really, I mean, in the summertime, you have zucchini, add those in. We love all the vegetables, guys. But you really want to make sure you have that onion. You really want to make sure, if you can, have that celery. So do you see already my volume has gone down? Do you see that? My vegetable volume has gone down. That's because all of this moisture is evaporating off and they're kind of condensing here. I'm really, really happy about this pot, about what's happening in this pot. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. We got any questions out there, George? How's everyone doing? You guys are a quiet group today. Oh my goodness, okay. Let me, um, Julie, we're very lucky. We have Julie Grimm here, everyone, from the American Diabetes Association. Welcome, Julie. We're so excited to be talking with you. Hello. Thanks, Chef Jenny. Hi. Hi. Julie, um, please tell our group, what are some of the nutritional benefits that we got going on here with your recipes? We've got a lot of wonderful vegetables that are going to give you lots of great fiber without a lot of extra carbohydrates. You've got wonderful vitamins from the peppers and um, you've got great things from the aromatics, from the garlic and from the onions. You've got fiber, you've got antioxidants. So you've got a lot of great things without a lot of calories or carbohydrate and great flavor. Well, I mean, Julie, can you come to all my classes? That was the perfectly <laughs> perfect synopsis. Thank you so much, guys. If you have questions about the American Diabetes Association, feel free to drop them in the chat. We've got Julie in class with us. She knows everything. I've got this here. I've just added my garlic in, everyone. Again, when we add garlic in, we're just, we're just looking for about a minute here to get it aromatic. We're not trying to burn it. So let me give you a top down, it's beautiful. I really want to highlight that the American Diabetes Association has an incredible recipe arsenal. They, they've, we've been looking at them for weeks now and I, I'm falling in love with all of them. If you go to diabetesfoodhub.org, you can go ahead and research more recipes that are um, health focused, but that also really high in flavor and even better that I love and really appreciative of that they're budget friendly as well. So you're not losing out on flavor just because you're being more health um, conscious. It's a really good place to start if you don't know where to start. And even if you're just wanting new recipes, great place to look. Okay, got my garlic in here. It smells just this veg. 
garlic, onions, bell pepper, celery. It smells incredible. So now we're going to start adding to make our sauce. I've got some broth here. Add that in. We've got some tomatoes. This guy. Do you guys work with bay leaf? Are we using bay leaf at home? I love bay leaf. It's delicious. It almost kind of like a tea bag. You eat, add it in. I've got some diced tomatoes here. You add it in when you are uh, making stews, stoops. When I make bolognese, I add a bay leaf in. It just kind of when you're simmering a sauce, it adds a lot of flavor. We have to remember to take out the bay leaf. Chef George, you're in charge of that, all right? Remind me to take out the bay leaf. It's not edible, so it's just adding flavor. When I used to teach cooking classes, I teach gumbo, and I tell a huge group of people, go ahead and add your bay leaf in, and then the whole class I'd be distracted. Don't forget, to, don't forget to tell them to take out the bay leaf. Don't forget to tell them to take out the bay leaf. It was always one of my worries that people were going to swallow bay leaf, but you guys are smart. I know you're not going to do that. Okay, we've got some here. Worcestershire sauce. Did I sound convincing? I said it really fast and tried not to pronunciate it too much. Worcestershire sauce. I think the trick is you're supposed to say Worcester first and then Worcestershire. I once worked for a company that made Worcestershire and I had to do a promotional video. And I think after half an hour, the marketing department was about to quit because I could not get it. I tried so many times. It's a very, so just got to go like, the worst if you're trying to talk about it with people, they don't know, all right? No one can pronounce it. Last ingredient, most important, Creole seasoning. What is Creole seasoning? It is a delicious spice blend. We were mindful to find one that is salt free. You might find, and I'm just going to bring this to a boil and then reduce it to a simmer. You might find Cajun seasoning. Are those the same thing? Close. But Creole actually has more flavor. Creole will have some herbs in it. So we're talking chili peppers, smoked paprika, cayenne. We're talking garlic, onion, pepper, and then the herbs, some oregano and thyme. So if you can only find Cajun seasoning, maybe add a little couple herbs that you guys have at home. Some dried herbs in there will make up for it. But we want to kind of reiterate here, just try to use salt-free. And I actually, I was jabbering on here, I do like to add that in when you add the garlic because it kind of opens up the spice in the um, seasoning a little bit. But really what we're looking here is for some, a little bit of spice, um, a little bit of some earthiness, a little bit of herb. So if you don't have the seasoning, open up your spice drawer, start pulling out people. Paprika is a really good one. Cayenne's a great one because we're looking for a little spice. You don't have cayenne. If you have hot sauce, maybe add a few dabs of hot sauce. We're just looking for a combination of a kind of garlic, onion, herb, and spice. Sound good? That's not intimidating. I bet most stores do have it. Has anyone tried to find it and couldn't find it? And Chef George, I just see to the rescue is posting in the chat a little quick recipe if you guys don't have one at home. Just make sure to mix salt if you guys don't want the salt. So it smells so good in here right now. We are simmering away. We just kind of want to reduce the sauce. The reason is we kind of want to get it a little thicker. I love how much veg we have in here. The veg is beautiful. Really, really adding a lot of flavor. It's also going to be really filling. You're not going to feel like you're missing anything. We'll let this simmer for about 10 minutes. I'm going to stir it occasionally. We really want to make sure, most importantly, that it doesn't burn. In this time, I'm going to go ahead and switch gears for a minute and go check on our cauliflower grits our delicious, wonderful cauliflower grits. They've just kind of been simmering away. You want them to go about 10 minutes. I just want to make sure that my um, cauliflower is fork tender. I want to make sure that it's cooked all the way through. So if you're roasting it on a pan right now, like um, you guys were suggesting, absolutely you can do that. This would be the time to maybe take it out of the oven. So I have a food processor here. You can also use a handheld blender. 
I do it straight in the pot. So I'm going to just come back here and grab my cauliflower. <coughs> Pardon me. Let's see how we're doing over here. Oh, yeah. Anyone have any questions? How are we doing out there? Looks like we're doing pretty good. You guys are so quiet. Oh, yeah. Oh, what, um, what other things besides shrimp could you use for this? You could, great question. Chef George just asked, what other things could you use in this Creole um, pot or, or Creole stew here that isn't shrimp? Well, portobello mushrooms, I think would be delicious. Um, slice them up, sear them up, just like you were doing the shrimp. They would need to go a little longer than the shrimp. The shrimp goes really quickly, but maybe I want to get a little color on those mushrooms. So make sure you get some color, about five minutes on each, five minutes total, maybe a couple minutes each side, and then take those out. That's going to add an incredible base. And then you can use vegetable stock if you don't want to use chicken stock. Okay, here we go. Got our cauliflower. Go and look. I wish you guys could smell the smells. Incredible. I'm just going to go ahead and add this mixture over to the bowl. I feel like grits have a little bit of texture to them because it is, um, grits are basically ground up corn. And you always get a little, a little nice little texture to them. So it's okay if you don't pulverize this to the moon. You can if you want something super, super creamy. But I like the idea of having a little bit of those, that cauliflower texture in there. I think that's gonna be really nice. So I'm just gonna go ahead, add this into our pan, into our food processor here. Again, if you don't have a food processor, you could use a blender. You could use a hand blender or immersion blender it's also known as. You could also just use a, you're gonna get a little more texture doing it this way, but you could use a potato masher. Get the kids involved, get some arm strength in there, get them back there, and then you can use um, absolutely a potato masher. But we love a food process here. Food processors really make cooking easy and fast, and that's what I'm looking for recipes. No matter what kind of recipe I'm making, I want cooking E easy and fast. A little bit of onion powder here. And then for some savoriness and some saltiness, but we're really upping our umami flavor here. Umami is a term for savory, that savory part on your tongue. We have a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Parmesan cheese has intensely umami flavor to it. So again, we're adding a ton of flavor, but we're not adding a ton of fat. And I'm just looking at this, I'm gonna add a little bit of water Add water as you go. Water, we want it creamy, we want it to blend nicely. Go lock this in. That was my creel over here, and just pulse away. And we're going and we're pulsing. Oh yeah. Getting a really nice, nice puree on that. Look at that, do you guys see that? see here you guys can see that I like that little texture in there it's up to you you can keep going until it's smooth this is also a great replacement for mashed potatoes if you're looking for something alternative to mashed potatoes the flavor is like very intense and lovely so I've got this here I'm just gonna add a few more cracks of fresh ground pepper I like the smoothness of this. I think we're going to I think we're going to stick with it. Again, if it feels like it's a little dry, that's fine. Just add a little bit of water in at a time. It's really really smooth. I want you guys to see this again. See how smooth and beautiful that is? Just like grits, but a ton ton of flavor. That's what we're looking for, a ton of flavor here. Okay. So, because I added the Creole seasoning over here, as this is cooking, our whole kitchen now smells incredible. I am smelling all of those really rich, deep spices in here. You can see all the veg. Just make sure you scrape the bottom, make sure it's not getting burned. 
I'm really smelling the paprika and the chili. It's coming out so nice. We got our little bay leaf in here. The bay is even adding a little smell. Really, really good. So we told you guys more delicious recipes at diabetesfoodhub.org. Please visit. It is an incredible collection of recipes. Anytime, any occasion, they've got it for you there. Beautiful photography, just a really great resource. Um, if you want to share what you're making today, we love to see it. We love, we love sharing is caring, everyone. Go ahead and share at AM Diabetes ASSN. I'm going to say that one more time. At AM Diabetes ASSN or at with homemade. And of course, always, if you want to see more recipes or sign up for classes, you can go to homemadecooking.com. So I'm just going to go ahead now. This is simmered. This is reduced. Smells fantastic. You all know that Chef George loves heat. We talk about, I talk about this all the time. If you're new to the chat, Chef George loves heat. So I think he would come over here and add a ton more cayenne secretly. I don't know if you guys, did he sneak at it all and add cayenne? He would. You can taste it now. See if you want a little more spice. It all kind of depends. Everyone's spice levels are different. For me, because there's a little bit of cayenne in that um, cage, Creole seasoning, I'm good. Shrimp. Now the shrimp go in. I don't want this at a boil. I just want this at a simmer. I don't want my shrimp to get rubbery. We're just trying to bring them back to temperature. So if you can see that, look at that. Stirring that in. I'm going to take my bay leaf out now. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All of that in. Now my shrimp's going to finish cooking. I really, really wish you guys could smell this because it is smelling fantastic in here. So last bit, we got to have some garnish. We got to have some flair. Green onions, also known as scallions, depending where you're shopping. Brightness, because this has kind of been sitting and it's cooked and our cauliflower grits, we have a really rich, savory flavor. This is a nice brightness, bright onion. So I'm gonna go ahead, chop off the white parts, kind of get off my dry tops, and just do some fine slices. Not everyone loves the bottom here. Do the top down here. Not everyone loves these bottoms. I like these bottoms. They have a little bit of a bite to them. So I'm just gonna do some thin slices here. It's not too fancy, but I really think this is what can make this dish take it to the next level. It's just a little bit of freshness. We have these beautiful cooked, rich, savory flavors, and we're just adding a little bit of freshness. Some fresh chive, if you don't have scallions, a little fresh chive would be wonderful too. So our shrimp is there. That liquid, that stew was so warm. As, as soon as we added that shrimp, it just brought it to where it needed to be. I took out my bay leaf. Did you take out your bay leaves, guys? Whoever's cooking, take them out. Lena, did you take out your bay leaf? Remember to take out your bay leaf. All right. We've got it here. Our beautiful stew, our beautiful shrimp. Let's plate this up. If I was a bull, I would be right here. We did that so fast. This is under an hour. It goes really, really quickly. Talk, talk to me out there. What are you guys thinking? Do you feel like you could do this? What part is holding you back a little bit? Talk to George. Let us know. Nothing? You guys are such a quiet, well-respected, well-behaved group. Could okay. you use pre-riced cauliflower for this? Sure. You absolutely could. It's going to cut down on your cooking time because it tends to be much finer, but you absolutely could. The question was, can we use pre-riced cauliflower? Yeah. So I am, and you absolutely could. I'm just gonna go ahead and add some of my beautiful cauliflower grits on my plate here. A high-sided bowl is a great for this because you want all that juice. That juice is beautiful, that juice has flavor. I'm gonna go ahead and go here I'd add my shrimp, 
right to the center. I've got that beautiful tomato broth. I like the color that the cauliflower is taking from our nice caramely notes. This broth is liquid gold. Do not leave this in the pot. This is meant to go right over and be on your platter. We want that in this bowl. So you see why we didn't need to add a, too much to the grits because we have this beautiful flavor on top of it. Let's get some little, the food stylist in me just wants a few more shrimp on top, guys. Look at that. That's what you want your shrimp to look like, bright and pink. And then we're just gonna take a little bit of our green scallions and do it over here. This is restaurant worthy, everyone. I don't know, I would pay good money for this. Let's see this on the side if you can. It's hard to get, get a good. But look how beautiful that looks. That came in under an hour. If you are wondering, you already got family on the calendar coming in for the holidays, trying to figure out what's, what you're gonna feed them. Especially, I cannot eat heavy food night after night after night. I'm always so appreciative during the holidays when someone does like a salad night or someone does something lighter. This is packed with flavor, but has a ton of lightness to it. It's rich in flavor, but not heavy. It's a perfect combination. I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna do it. A little bit of these grits, oh, these beautiful veg. Ooh, the spice is perfect for me. Other people would do half a bottle of hot sauce. Some might be, you know what, that's a little, that's a little hot. If you want to taste the Creole seasoning before and kind of gauge how spicy it is, you can always cut back on that Creole seasoning and maybe just up with some paprika and some garlic powder to cut it through. This is delicious. The grits really absorb, mimic, the cauliflower mimics grits and really absorbs the sauce, which is what it's there for, to really get this beautiful stew broth in there. And the green onions are just adding that nice freshness. Ooh, it's perfect, especially as it's getting colder out here. I don't know, all of you out, I know you're all over the place, but we are in the 40s here in Seattle today. I don't know what happened. A switch happened and it is winter. So this is nice and cozy. So if you're cold, if you're, 85 degrees and perfect, keep it to yourself because I'm having a hard time with the cold, guys. It's really, it's really rough right now. I'm from California, this is a culture shock. So, but even in warm weather, this would be delicious. I mean, this is from Louisiana. They have warm weather all the time. Everyone, thank you so much for coming. I want it, once again, look at this beautiful dish. I want to send you one more time, diabetesfoodhub.org. You are getting beautiful, phenomenal recipes like this one that are healthy, that are well-rounded, and that are delicious. Want to kind of just remind you, one in 10 Americans have diabetes, so if it's not someone in your family, you definitely probably have someone in your life who it is, and it's always such a wonderful thing to be able to offer them food because for me, cooking is love, and when you can share love that also fits in someone's lifestyle, that's the best. I know everyone's diets are different based on what their doctor recommends, but this is a good place where you can go to start. Um, use it for the holidays, use it for a Wednesday night, use it for whenever. We definitely want to thank, shout out Julie Grimm for coming and um, joining us. Yay to Julie. Yes, guys, homemade show sure, some love. And um, once again, homemadecooking.com. If you had a good time today, then we want to see you again. To all of you who are first timers, welcome. Once you do one class with us, your family, so you're stuck with us now, come back again. To all you returning homemaders, it's wonderful to see you. Thank you as always for joining us. And until next time, we'll see you uh, keep cooking and come back and cook with us. Thanks so much. Have a good week, everyone.